Hello, gentlemen. My name is Paul Robson. I am the founder of Manifesto, and this is going to be my take on principles towards sexual mastery. So we're finding that sexuality is very, very relevant and that it seems like people are more and more confused about what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to direct and control their sexual energy. So this document here is based on my personal experience and uh, my work uh, in Manifesto. Uh, personally, for many years, I've uh, exp explored and tried out many different approaches to sexuality in my life, including uh, several dead ends uh, to a place today where I'm, you know, I'm not fully realized as a sexual master, I would say, but uh, I feel like I've definitely learned a lot of things, of especially what doesn't work uh, and what seems to be good principles uh, for being on the path of doing this work. Um, and in my work in Manifesto, I've also had the privilege to be able to follow many, many men with very different types of lives very closely in their um, in their lives and, and also how their approaches to sexuality. And so I've really seen uh, what works and what doesn't work uh, in, in many examples. And it becomes very clear as well how our sexuality is driving many other aspects in our life as well. So, you know, the first thing I'll say about these principles is that they're really based on seeing you and your sexuality and your person as a full human being, which is fully connected and holistic. Uh, so a lot of approaches towards sexual mastery would be like kind of tips and tricks and maybe some techniques into what you can do with a woman uh, to give her more orgasms or how to, you know, get women to come home with you or something like that, uh, pick up uh, stuff and things like that. And I, I think that these kinds of things are very superficial uh, and they don't really lead to any uh depth of being in some ways. Uh, and, and, and really, it's like a kind of misunderstanding that, you know, being a man is all about the quantity of the woman that you've had sex with, or the number of orgasms that you can give a woman. Uh, whereas I've really found, you know, the quantity is far less important uh, than the quality of the connection that we can have with women um, and, and with a partner and, uh, and how that feeds into the whole of your life as a man and the purpose and the direction and what you're doing. So the idea with these principles is to challenge you. Uh, so I would recommend only listening if you are ready to have your views challenged uh, and the ways you think about the way that you think about these things to kind of be inspired. Uh, it's not like these have to be the final answers for anything, um, but I would really encourage you to reflect on them. And then, you know, let me know if there are areas that you think could be improved or different, whatever. Uh, it's really a, a pragmatic set of ideas that I've seen work uh, and that can you can use to inspire you in a pragmatic sense. Uh, so I want to get down off like the high philosophy, morality kind of discussions here, and just talk about what do we actually see that's working in men's lives? Um, and, and how can we be doing that better, and especially as you know, young men, very confused about sexuality, looking for answers, looking for guidance, uh, and looking for how can we be doing things in a better way? What are the principles that can be helping us do that? So I put together some slides, uh, which can help us to uh, illustrate some of these ideas, uh, which I'll share on my screen here. Um, with the first nice slide, uh, which I hope you can see now, uh, of Towards Sexual Mastery. Uh, the deck that I took uh, was a car presentation uh, thing with like Ferraris or some kind of fast red cars and stuff like that. So uh, <laughs> I thought maybe that would appeal to some of the same aspects of men. Um, so uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is just that, you know, this is, as I said, a pragmatic uh, rule or a pragmatic set of principles uh, for considering different things and helping people to make decisions in their life um, to create a more meaningful and flourishing life. So it's not like a rule book or something that we use to judge other people and tell them that they're wrong or that they're doing something incorrectly. Uh, in fact, we find that the most helpful thing for men uh, when they need to start thinking about their sexuality and the way that they're using their sexual energy is to be met in a closed, private, and supportive forum, generally with other men only, that's normally the best way to do it. Um, and, and that forum, you know, it should be just a space for sharing, sharing about what's happening in my life, what's happening with my sexuality, where I'm noticing it's, you know, showing up and how I'm using it. Um, and there shouldn't be showing off in that forum. I think most of us have experienced kind of like in school uh, where boys will, you know, kind of be telling all these weird and wonderful and often exaggerated stories about, about sexual escapades. Um, and, and it kind of like gets locked into a way of like climbing the male hierarchy or something like that. Um, so no showing off, no shaming, no judging, 
um, but just an open, honest sharing is the is the best starting point we've found uh, for for this to be happening with. And and everybody's on their own unique journey as far as sexuality is concerned, you know. So so different people on different steps, uh, and I don't know, and certainly no one else knows exactly which is the next step for any person. That's something that people need to find out for themselves. Uh, and and often can't be forced into something that they don't feel that they want. And, and the reason for that, of course, is desire is a very, very central thing when it comes to sexuality and to man's life in general. So, so we actually start with this idea of desire. Uh, and, and my understanding of desire, and I think what I've really found to be productive, is that one needs to realize that desire is a force for good. Many men are told that their desires are bad, that their desires are not acceptable, that there's no space for their desires, that their desires are even shameful and negative. And yes, it's true that men often do have uh, twisted and negative desires, um, but there's, I, I have a very strong belief that this is what results from a suppression of natural desire. And I, I think what men naturally desire is the good, is to raise up, is a life of flourishing, of mastery, of goodness as well. Uh, and so I think by um, taking that, just taking that stake in the ground and saying like desire is good and we really believe that, um, then we can, we can actually start uh, by saying, well, it's okay to reach towards your desires. And this includes the sexuality as well. So sexuality is also a force that at the end of the day wants to bring us together with something that is other than ourselves. Uh, and it, the only way it can really work is is through is through love as well so so we believe that sexuality um desire needs to be coupled with a clear understanding of reality uh, and also as a man you need to take responsibility for the consequences of your desire uh, but when we have that long-sighted view which is inclusive of understanding the way things are then then the, then we can actually apply our desire in a good way and it's actually the twisted blinded kind of short-sighted uh you know misdirected desire which often leads into trouble yeah so that's desire uh going more specifically to sexual energy uh, then we believe that sexual energy is creative life force energy so at its most basic part you know freud talks about the libido as 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 basically it's our sexual drive but it's also the desire to create and obviously you know if you can look at this from all kinds of different perspectives uh, from an evolutionary perspective um that you know it's like the creation of new life through our sexuality that happens uh, but it's coupled uh, to all of our creativity as human beings and and to um our our desire as men to i, I like this word you know to call it the, the becoming the father of a new creation as the most um it's the most uh rewarding thing to be able to do as as a man is is to you know um of course perhaps the ultimate thing that one can father as a as a you know as a life project is to is to create flourishing you know young children uh together with a woman uh through sexual intercourse but 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 men attain so much desire from or sorry so much uh, satisfaction from fathering communities and initiatives and projects and buildings and whatever it is that they create uh, in their lives as well. So, so sexual energy uh, is, is this creative life force energy and, and the way that we direct that energy into our creations uh, will determine um, how, yeah, so much else in our life as well. So yeah, there's this idea that we can then direct this energy. We can uh, be, be, um, and, and I think the best way of thinking about it is, is to just use a simple up and down uh, thing and everybody can recognize this. I think if you just reflect about it honestly for a second, uh, sometimes you can direct your sexual energy upwards towards a higher goal or in some kind of productive manner. And sometimes you direct it downwards into a destructive or self-sabotaging manner. So, you know, the classical negative one would be uh, the young man sitting in his parents' basement, jerking off every, sing every single day and squirting his life force energy into a tissue paper and not going anywhere with that, um, while challenging one's sexual energy in an upwards manner uh, is something that is connected to creating good and sustainable life. Uh, so it could be about, you know, bringing one together with a partner uh, in, a, in a loving, uh, supportive relationship. Uh, the negative aspects, it's normally more functioning in supporting you and somehow distracting you from pain and discomfort, uh, or it's giving you some kind of instant gratification of pleasure, like right now to, to get a little kick to kind of, you know, um, yeah, just really often it becomes our best friend when it becomes this kind of addictive uh, behavior of, of getting that. And in some ways that can become very 
twisted as well um, and, and lead to even more destructive vampire-like or zombie-like uh, behavior. If anybody, if you know Jonathan Pichot, he talks about these, these archetypes of the, the vampire and the zombie. And I think these are things that can come through with very twisted uh, sexual orientation of one's energy as well. So on the other hand, sexual mastery, it entails uh, learning to put your sexual energy in a positive direction so that you become a master of your sexuality uh, instead of becoming a slave to it. And I think those are really the two options that we have. Uh, we, can, we can master our sexuality or we can be, become a slave of, of its impulses and driving us, you know? And, and so the more that I just let my sexual energy you know, the impulses of like what I need right now to feel satisfaction, that's, that's a step towards slavery. Um, whereas when I'm consciously deciding what is it, how is it that I'm setting up the structures of my life, my friendships, my relationships with women and with men, um, that's channeling the sexual energy into which lifting me uh, in a way that, you know, I can see that I'm, I'm creating a more sustainable and meaningful life. This is the, 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 the path towards sexual mastery. So, uh, obviously, when we talk about sexuality, then we need to talk about relationships to women as well, uh, because this is a central thing. And so just some, a couple of basics, you know, there are similarities and differences between men and women. Men and women are fundamentally equal in that we are both human, and we also have important fundamental differences in our hormonal makeup, in the way that we see the world, in the way that we relate to other people, et cetera, et cetera. And these differences play an important part in our creation of polarity and especially sexual attraction. So when we're all the same, then it seems like that attraction seems to dry up a little bit, but it's actually the differences between men and women where these, uh, where these, uh, these kind of things, uh, where attraction happens. And so women are often especially attracted to men who have mastered their sexual energy, their sexual creative powers to be able to direct it in creative ways. Uh, one thing I'll mention about men is that men, for men, like women will always be this kind of like unknowable other in some ways, which will ignite our passions, they inspire us, they attract us, uh, and they also create a sense of longing in a way which, which will never really be completely fulfilled. Uh, and, and, and often is the cause of, you know, if you look at many of the greatest stories of our civilization, uh, then, then it's, it's the attraction of women which just drives men uh, to great and also tragic uh, feats and, and acts uh, throughout all our, our long history. So, so we are dri driven to be attracted with women. Who knows if this probably comes from our mother and the desire to become one with her again as well. Uh, but we want to be integrated with women as well. And there are, of course, um, men who have kind of given up on this. And there's, uh, I think, Jordan Peterson, he famously called, uh, there's a group of guys called MG Toe, uh, men going their own way. He called them a bunch of pathetic weasels, uh, which uh, basically have given up on any kind of integration with women. They believe that men and women should be separated and you know, they, they live their lives uh, in a way that makes them completely independent of women. Um, but here at Manifesto, we strongly believe uh, in the, the lifetime vision of striving towards more in integration with women again. Um, and, and, and so we believe that we create separate men's only spaces. And in the beginning, I spoke about these kind of like men's groups as in like a, a forum where men can privately share about things that are troubling them, <laughs> including their sexuality, including women, but including all kinds of other things as well. Um, hopefully it's not just women and sexuality, um, but, but the idea is it's a temporary separation to be just men together, to ground us more in our own being and our own identity uh, in a positive sense of that as well so that we can go out and meet women again and cause uh, you know work towards that greater integration in our own life and so you know by integrating with actual women out in reality then we're also able to integrate the masculine feminine uh, sides of ourselves and our own person as well uh, and and to do this i think there's a, a good principle which needs to be considered, which is that we need to meet women and acknowledge their full personhood, especially when it comes to sexuality. So if we, if we see a woman as a sexual object only for there for the gratification of my sexual desires, then I'm reducing that woman to an object for my needs. Uh, and, and that will never allow full integration with uh, a woman. And it won't also enable me to integrate those various parts of myself either. So, so meeting a woman with a view of her whole personhood and with the aim of, of full union with her uh, is 
yeah, it's really about approaching one of life's greatest mysteries, one could say. Um, it's something that we can use the rest of our lives on, but it's something that I think people who have done it and done it with integrity have found to be the most useful and valuable thing that they can use their life on as well. So uh, integration with one, we need to walk, move towards intercourse, sexual intercourse, which is the actual meeting of men and women. And so there is a tendency in our society, of course, where you know, there's the pornification of our society. I think uh, I was perhaps the last generation of boys who didn't just have porn like shoved in their face all the time in, in society and in culture, uh, the way it is today. Um, but I, I think there's a, a general understanding as well, even, even amongst, you know, still very prevalent is that, you know, the sexuality and the sexual intercourse is the most intimate, most holy most pure thing that you can have with another human being it's the it's a it's a very sacred thing and and that we preserve its sacredness and its specialness and, and the intimacy in it by by considering it very private um and so so you know it's it, it, it can become you know it can also become very debased and very kind of watered down in many ways especially when we you know practice extreme promiscuity and we just you know like for some people uh, having sex with someone is just like you know having a cup of coffee it's just you know like some basic physical act that you're doing and it doesn't really matter um, whereas if you see you know, the mystical the sacred aspects of sexuality then and you and you actually protect those and guard those in yourself and, and in your interaction uh, and your use of your sexuality then it actually becomes a way of of transcending uh, the the basic uh, kind of animality of, of sexuality and, and lifting it up uh, to something uh, far higher and more beautiful as well. So when we have a sexual relation with a woman, obviously we we have uh, you know we, we, there's the sexual act itself, but it, going into a sexual relation with a woman, um, it means that what happens is, is that there's this incredibly strong attractive force between you. You're, you're drawn together with each other. And this is what falling in love is, I guess. Uh, it's very often connected to sexuality, especially for young men. Um, and, and it creates bonds of commitment between a man and woman, even though such bonds are very, very difficult and complicated and, and come with all kinds of inherent issues and challenges that need to be dealt, dealt with. And I think part of it is because, you know, that sexual act, when it's, when it's treated as something beautiful and something sacred, then when men and women are intimate with each other, they, they drop their masks with each other. They show themselves the way that they really are, you know, in a much deeper way. Um, and, and by penetrating or being penetrated, then they, their men and women are able to see and feel much deeper into themselves than what's otherwise possible. So this creates this experience of intimacy, depth of, of even transcendence, and it opens up the possibility of reaching parts of the psyche, which are normally inaccessible, actually. Um, and, and when you do that, then, then what happens, and, and this is what anybody who's been in a committed relationship will experience, is that you, you're able to open up for a potential growth and learning as a human being, like your, 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 your soul or your being can, can actually grow inside this container of this relationship by being you know, merged with something other than yourself in some way. So, so yeah, a beautiful thing. Um, and then there's another aspect of sexuality, of course, then sexual relations with a woman, uh, which can get forgotten sometimes. Uh, and it is children, <laughs> parenting. Um, so this is the natural, of course, this is also what animals uh, especially have, uh, you know, integrated part of sexual, the sexual act is. Um, but, you know, this has been kind of forgotten as well, again, because of the pornification of our society. Um, also, birth control technologies have, have kind of obscured this connection um, between, but, you know, obviously, you know, if you don't know that sex is there to create children, then you're, then you're missing out on something, or if you forget that, um, because uh, it doesn't always have to be about uh, making children every time you have sex with your partner. Obviously, that's not the case. But but there is this natural connection um, between sexuality and and you know becoming parents, which which can't be uh, can't be separated out or can't be lost. You need to you need to realize this. Um, and you know in our in our societies today, we've seen uh, that. Um, First of all, you know, drastically falling birth rates uh, as we've had this sexual revolution. So people might be having more sex, but they're certainly not making more children. This is a problem for, for many societies. 
Um, and we're also just seeing men and women who are very immature and unprepared to actually take on the role of parents because uh, we've kind of separated these two things naturally. Whereas before there was this natural connection to, well, if you want to engage in sexual activity, then obviously you also need to realize that that could come children out of that as well. Um, so, so, you know, the, the, the family, and this is a whole other topic, of course, but, you know, the family is the foundation, the cornerstone of any healthy society. You can't do without it. You know, if you look, take children away from their biological parents and just put them in some kind of state's care or something like that, it just, it doesn't work. Uh, so, so the state will never be able to take over the role of parents and parenting, and, and these things need to be remembered, and it's a part of any sexual relationship at all. Um, so, so you can probably feel what I'm aiming towards and building up towards here is, is, is something that's, that, that's difficult for a lot of men to accept. Um, but I, I think that this is, again, goes back to, you know, you can, you can choose a, to just see women as objects for your sexual desire, which you rub your genitals on them and get your, your kick. Uh, or we can look at sexuality as a commitment, as an opportunity to commit uh, into a bond of, of a relationship, which then becomes a container for shared growth between two people. Um, so, so when, especially when this bond is, you know, made seriously between two people and when it, and when it encompasses children as well, then it becomes about something far bigger than yourself. Uh, and actually, I think, most people who've tried this will say this is both by far the most powerful container for growth because you're you're inside something you can't get out of. You need to deal with stuff, and when one leaves a you know a committed relationship uh, because of problems, then normally you're taking your problems with you, uh, and they'll just show up in the next relationship as well. So, so again, this kind of deep, intimate meeting of beings, you know, will um, bring up all your your own problems and issues. Uh, someone actually wrote to me, and, and, and I thought it was beautifully formulated. Uh, he, he wrote, and this is William from Slovakia, that your, your kind of traumas are often the threshold guardians to the next level of depth and learning uh, as a human being. And so most people realize this in a, in a marriage, you know, at some point you hit a boundary or you hit an issue somehow and you can't get past it. And so the easy thing to do, and this is what many therapists increasingly recommend is like, oh, then just like move on, leave that person, you know, you've outgrown each other, go on to the next thing. Um, but but the, the issue is that, you know, you're probably actually missing out on an opportunity for growth for both you and your partner by staying and dealing with the things that are coming up and, and, and insisting on, on, on actually continuing to meet each other and, and greater intimacy. Uh, and so, you know, there's an ancient idea of marriage actually as a martyrdom, as a death to self, where the marriage uh, ceremony is, is really uh, kind of seen as a funeral. Uh, and then something new is born, you know, where the two individuals die to themselves and then, and then something new is born. And that's, of course, just like the first initiation of then a continuing process of death and rebirth, uh, which can happen inside uh, a marriage or inside a relationship, a committed relationship. So now that we've come this far, I'm going to go all the way and talk about marriage as well. <laughs> not very, um, what can one say? It's not like the hottest, coolest idea at all. Um, but uh, I especially think, you know, manifesto being a men's work organization, then one needs to like, just think a little bit about like, well, what's actually happening here as well? Because if we look at all the studies that have ever been done on marriage, then we see that marriage is pretty much the most beneficial action that a man can take in his life, if we're looking at this from a scientific perspective, right? Um, you know, I don't want to base this whole thing on science. I started with desire because I wanted to start with something that was really close to our hearts and close to our experience of being a man. But, you know, we shouldn't ignore the data and the science either. Uh, and so pretty much all studies show that um, married men, they live longer. They're healthier on all fronts. Uh, they earn higher incomes. They have higher levels of education. Uh, they're less prone to addictions and certainly also to lifestyle diseases. Uh, and married men also have far more sex than unmarried men. Um, and they have far more satisfying sex lives as well. Um, so, so, you know, when you have a partner and both of you invested in, in each other and you know that, okay, well, the only opportunity we have if there's a commitment is to, to um, work on our sex life together, then, then, then actually, you know, that, so that, you know, there's these cultural myths about, you know, like marriage is dry and boring and very kind of terrible. There's no sex in it or something like that. And it doesn't mean that, you know, married couples don't go through periods which are higher and lower um, and, and where it gets better or worse, but 
but but actually uh, the truth of the matter is that single life is by far more difficult and and dry when it comes to sexuality as well it's far more difficult whereas when you're in a, in a committed relationship then you you have each other there all the time as well so yeah when i talk about sexuality obviously not all men are ready to get married uh, and some men will never be married or you know it's not the path for everybody either some people's persons just don't go that way and that's okay um, that's, that's, you know, it's not, it's not like we're trying to shame people who, who don't want to get married. Um, but for by far the majority of men, then, you know, just aiming towards making yourself the type of man that would be a good marriage partner, <laughs> if you're not there yet, uh, is the kind of action that would lead you to the most flourishing and, and powerful and, and meaningful life as well. Uh, so yeah, the, this committed relationship with the woman has this tendency to, to civilize men, to focus men, to give them stability and to give them a kind of a foundation, which, which is normally very, very beneficial for them as well. So yeah, uh, to complete the circle, then I will just finish talking a little bit about sexual mastery, uh, and, and what we started with as well. Um, so obviously, you know, the idea of being a sexual master is something that's really out of reach uh, for for anybody and and I think the you know it, it entails if if it entails like you know the constant direction of all of one's sexual energy in the most productive way possible then you know no one's going to get there no one's going to no one's going to manage that you know we we when it comes to our sexual energy it's a wild and uncontrolled energy most of us have you know very chaotic elements in our lives we're very susceptible to all kinds of things that can happen we're carrying around a bag of traumas and baggage and issues and whatever it is and so so we're all going to fall sometimes um and, and so the idea of having a set of principles for sexual mastery is to have a standard that we can you know kind of be orientating ourselves around and especially creating the structures in our lives which can in the long term be shifting our behaviors from the ones that we know are self-destructive and you know not leading the correct direction and which are wasting our energy um, and and be pointing them in a more positive direction you know and so this is about the relationships that we have it's the rituals that I have in my life it's it's the it's the patterns of behavior the practices that I'm doing you know if I'm spending hours on Twitter every day or if I'm like you know jerking off to porn every single every single day or something like that then these things I know are not helping me uh, whereas you know spending time with other men who have beautiful, powerful, and supportive relationships with women uh, who have respectful approaches to women as well, who are, you know, who, who can be my, who, who can be role models for me. Uh, this is obviously something that uh, is, um, yeah, very, very productive and edifying for, for us as well. So, yeah, uh, I, I, again, I think, you know, these, the, the one thing I'll say, well, the last thing I'll say is that this is not a solo project. <laughs> uh, playing Playing around with your sexual energy uh, is uh, is playing with fire in some ways, um, and so having other good men who are not trying to compete with you, not trying to dominate you, uh, not trying to exploit you or use you, but who are there as as friends, male friends, and preferably even you know if you're if you're not you know it, it, this can be very productively done in an intentional men's group as well uh, to be able to direct one's life one's energy one's approach to woman uh, and one's creative forces libido in establishing you know a meaningful powerful and directed life uh, for yourself uh, this is done very very well together with other men who have the same goal the same explicit uh, goal and intentional goal of doing the exact same thing so if you want to meet other men who are doing this uh, or you know who want to discuss these principles and and you know you don't have to agree about everything that i've said yeah whatsoever but the idea is that men who 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 agree on the vision of of an integrated life where their sexuality is a part of being a harnessed force which is leading them towards a, a more purposeful life uh, then a really good place to meet other men who are wanting to do that as well is at the European men's gathering this summer it's happening in August in Denmark uh, about 140 guys 150 guys from 30 different countries generally coming um, and it's a really really powerful experience uh, where obviously we're diving into these topics as well so yeah I I hope that this video has spoken to you has inspired you uh, and uh, or challenge you 
Um, and I'm really looking forward to hearing other perspectives of men uh, who might have differing perspectives or ideas about, about this. I know that none of this is absolutely set in stone for a lot of you. Um, on Manifesto Core, we're having this discussion right now as well. We have several different speakers and open community meetings uh, planned for the next month uh, to, be, to be talking about this. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing and hopefully making an update or having some more public discussions with people with differing perspectives as well. Thanks very much.